Okay, so hello, welcome to our next uh, virtual bridge session. And today, I'm delighted to say that we are rejoined by Nader <laughs> for a second round, equally on Teams, but this time um, around the use of assessment approaches um, while working in our lockdown situation, and particularly formative assessment. So without further ado, Nader, over to you. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, very privileged to be here and uh, be working with you guys. It, it's a pleasure. And it's always a pleasure to work with uh, Kenji and uh, Jason anyway. Uh, over the years, I've really appreciated their feedback and their help. So today, uh, this morning, we're going to look at uh, how we can do assignments or, or rather assessments in teams. Uh, they're both valid and they're both our only way of measuring uh, student uh, success in some ways. Because of the COVID situation, we are off work. So we have to really adjust to the new norm. And the new norm is basically working from home. Uh, and the biggest problem that gives us is how do we assess our students? We no longer are able to provide uh, a, an environment which it, is, which it is controlled under our supervision so we can measure uh, their learning. So we have to adopt and adapt new technologies. Uh, so this morning, that's what I'll be looking at. How can we assess our students uh, in an uncontrolled informal environment? There are several ways which I'll go over today. <coughs> Excuse me. If I may share my screen with you, uh, I was talking to Kenji yesterday about how do I manage the various assignments and assessments and how do I uh, make sure that this, it is the students own work because they can simply copy. We cannot see what they're doing and they can hand it in. So we need an additional way of reinforcing uh, the grades that they are achieving and make sure that it is their own work. So I'm going to talk about uh, for, uh, informal assessments this morning and assignments and also how do we have uh, verbal questioning at the end. And uh, Kenji asked me uh, if I could show you channels first so you have a better understanding of what we do. So I'm going to share my screen and just talk about channels to begin with. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen. So what I want to do first is show you uh, my teams. So I've got two different teams opened up here. Uh, the single and three phase uh, rotating motors. Here, this is a unit that uh, there are two lecturers delivering this unit. Incidentally, can you all see my screen? I'm not quite sure. Yeah, good, good. Because uh, this is different. Uh, it doesn't tell me uh, that my screen is being shared. Now, before I make a start, as I said the last time, I don't want this to be a one-way discussion and basically static. So during uh, my presentation at any point uh, when I'm talking, if you have a question, don't wait till the end. Uh, just ask, put a question on the chat section and then uh, Kenji as the ad admin or moderator will come in and ask that question on your behalf. And I can answer it there and then rather than waiting till the end. So please don't feel that you have to wait till the end. Ask at any point where you're not sure, and I can go over it for, the, for everyone to understand. So uh, I'm looking at two units here. Uh, this one here, this, uh, it's a SKA unit at level seven, and this one is the graded unit for the HND at level eight, the project. So this one here, there are two lecturers that are delivering this, myself and another colleague. And we deliver that at two different campuses, in Alloa campus and in Falkirk campus. So rather than having two separate classes, two separate uh, teams, we have the same team, but we create private channels in here by uh, going at the three dots, the ellipses, and add channel. So now I have my own channel with my own students and my colleague, you can see the lock symbol, that means I have no access to it. He has his own channel with his own students. So the two of us, we can use the same uh, class notebook. We can uh, share all the information with our students, 
but at the same time we have our own individual classrooms because simply we deliberate at different times uh, so we can just manage our own uh, we also have the meeting room i'll come back to that and another possibility is that uh, the same unit the project and a graded unit i deliver that i also deliver another unit to the same cohort of students so rather than creating another team i use this team here and i simply add another uh, channel to it so if i go to classroom class notebook i will see that i have my hn graded unit here it will take a moment for you to load up so the same cohort, same group of students, they have the project. They also have another uh, page, which is for the transformers section. It's a separate unit altogether, but I can combine them in the same class team in separate uh, pages. So again, I don't have to create a new whole new team. I don't have to invite students. Uh, I'm, I'm centralizing my activities in one area. Now, I also have a meeting room in here. That's for meeting students either as a group or individually, if there are questions, if they need help and they don't want others to know. I also use that for verbal questioning, which I will explain later on. So this is about uh, creating the channels. Now, the meeting today is regarding how do we create assignments? Before I go to that, I would like to look at uh, a sway and just explain what we mean by uh, assessing. Normally, we deliver our units to our students and we measure their learning through summative assessments or assignments. But in most cases, we do have summative assessments that we need to uh, pass to students and ask them to uh, complete the exams during the period and submit it back. So we have to measure the learning. There are two ways we can measure their skill set via assessments. What, what are their abilities, what they've learned, what they can reproduce in terms of knowledge. We also have competencies, which we measure their capabilities through assignments. And assignments can be either uh, written uh, papers or uh, lab work activities. Okay, so uh, assessments break them down into two forms. The formal assessment, which is summative, it is uh, delivered under controlled uh, conditions. P uh, usually it is closed book, students have no access to their notes, and uh, they have a period of set time, for example, an hour, during which time they have to uh, reproduce their information uh, or from their own knowledge and their own skill set and uh, they have no access to any additional material except what they've learned themselves and that's usually the way we measure the learning and then everything being okay we can uh, uh, issue the certification and tell them that they have passed uh, there is also the formative assignment assessment this is very informal uh, it can be open book and this is basically a measure of learning of uh, for the students to understand what how well they've done uh, what are their strengths and what areas they are weak at that they need to study before the summative is given to them so the formative is very much informal sometimes open book it can be open ended time uh, or given um, two hours or it can be two days or two weeks etc it's really up to the lecturer and the students but it is not a measure of learning because it is not formal. Uh, on the other side, we have the assignment. Uh, assignment measures the competencies that they have gained, what they can do in terms of lab work or writing reports based on the knowledge they have gained through the skills and through the teaching. So assignments, again, are informal. They are usually open book in terms of uh, reports and essays or practical activities in labs uh, where they write the reports again with a logbook and uh, record the data and analyze it. Uh, this is very much about an analysis and this is about evaluation rather than analysis. Now, the problem we have these days is that we cannot use summative because we have no 
control over the environment where the students are. And we cannot do practicals in general because we do not have access to our labs and equipment that we need. So uh, we only have the option of looking at formative ass ass assessments and uh, reports in terms of assignments. Uh, so I tell my students that uh, because we cannot do summative assessments, we will do a combination of formative reports and uh, formative assignments. Uh, formative assessments and formative assignments. We also reinforce that with uh, questions. Now, when I des describe to my students that it is going to be a formative test, it will be during a set period of time, for example, an hour. If, it, if the test is an hour, I will give them an extra 20 minutes uh, because they have to log in, download, etc., and then re-upload. So it can be either open-ended in terms of time. We can give them one day, two days, one week, uh, but normally no more than two days. Otherwise, it becomes uh, a farce, really. Uh, so formative, usually I do it during my class. Or we can give them uh, overnight. And uh, I tell the students that it is formative, but it, is, it will be a measure of uh, their success, how, what they've learned, how much they've learned. And I explain to them that uh, I cannot control their environment. So if they have their notes next to them, I cannot tell. And they all go, yeah, yeah, beauty, brilliant. And I say, no, hold on, guys. Uh, because I cannot control the environment, I have to have some measure of uh, comparison. So once you've done your formative in the following week, I will look at uh, your ass assessment, the formative assessment. I will grade it and I will give you feedback, but then I will also call you in one at a time in our meeting room and ask you one or two questions verbally, just to reinforce the fact that it is your own work and you haven't copied. So if you do go ahead and copy, be advised that you will be asked questions as well. And if you don't know it, you will fail. So pass really depends on your formative answers and your verbal uh, discussions with myself. Uh, there is also the report, which I use for a lot of my courses, such as project or project management or et cetera. And the reports are usually given out over a period of one or two weeks, where the students download their requirements, the assessment paper, they write their report, they submit it back, and I can grade it and give it back to them. And if they need to do any remedials, they can do again and resubmit. <coughs> Excuse me. So in terms of uh, online activity, uh, we have no act, we cannot, excuse me, <coughs> we cannot use summative and we cannot use practical. So our only two options are formatives and reports. And these are the two ways I measure the student uh, success. So we have no measure of learning because of the current situation, but we can measure the achievement. And that's, that's what I want to do. So I can base my grading on the fact that they have learned some, uh, not, they have gained some knowledge and they can also reproduce, analyze and evaluate some work. And that's my presentation for the sway. Uh, before I go any further, has anyone got any questions that I can answer just now? Uh, feel free to ask, otherwise I'll just move on. Everyone seems to be okay just now. Uh, sorry, Nader, there is, there is one question from Jason. Sure. He's asked, uh, is it important to reinforce the value of the skill competence rather than just getting the pass merit in the summative ass assessment? Do we overemphasize the qualification over the ability sometimes? Uh, oh, fair enough. Uh, the ability is the most important part, not so much the qualification. But we must also provide them with some kind of a certification or qualification for the work they've done. And we cannot just issue a certification based on our own opinion. SQA has said that this is very much up to you. We leave it up to you how you assess your students. But I, I have to be objective. I cannot just be subjective and say, yeah, this student has done really well. Go ahead and you're a pass. The other student has done really bad. You will not pass. Uh, it opens us up to uh, scrutiny by SQA, and it also opens up to uh, challenges by students. Why one student would get an A and the other one would pass, would fail. 
So this way, I can always refer back to my documentation and, and give reason as to why one student deserves to pass and another one doesn't. So it's not subjective. It's not based on my opinion, but on facts that I've gathered uh, by examining students' abilities and capabilities. Not both at the same time in a lot of ways, but we need to uh, be uh, sure that the student has gained that certification for the sake of uh, our internal verification process. So my managers know that I'm doing my job correctly. And also the value of that qualification that the student has gained. So when they go for an interview or for a job, they, and they say, oh, I got my HND in 2020, and the employer says, ah, right, okay. <laughs> so it has to be as valid and as uh, uh, respectable as all the other qualifications in the previous years. We do not want to uh, endanger the, the, uh, the qualification and it's a uh, certain, well, I cannot, I can never pronounce that word. Anyway, <laughs> there are some words I cannot pro uh, pronounce, uh, but the qualification has to stand. Uh, it cannot be just a Mickey Mouse pass or fail. Okay. So that's the reason I do it that way. Now, some of my colleagues are not as uh, strict as myself. For example, when I do my summatives, I give them the same time as I would the uh, formative. So, sorry, when I give them my formative assessment, I give them the same time as a summative, and it has to be done during class time. Yet, as a college, uh, we've decided that some formatives can be given at and the answers will be submitted within one 24 or 48 hours. That gives the student a lot more room to go and research and answer. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it loses its validity in some sense. Uh, but it is entirely up to the college and to the lecturers themselves at the moment. Okay. I just want to make sure that everything is okay. So uh, here I've got a channel called the meeting room. And once the students have had their assignments or assessments marked, then I would call them individually within the meeting room, ask them questions just to make sure that they understand what they're uh, writing and they can uh, reply uh, to me success successfully and give me the proper answers. So I know it is their own work. Even, and I explain to them, look guys, even if you have copied, I cannot say whether it's a copy or not because uh, I can tell if it's an exact word for word copy because I know my words, I know my notes, but if you've just changed some words, I cannot say it is a fail because you've cheated. But even if you've copied, if you can answer correctly during the one-on-one -on -one meetings, then you can tell, you can show that you have gained the knowledge. And uh, I think Jason Miles Campbell would appreciate that when I talk about the past and how we used to cheat during the exam, uh, even when we were writing the answers in a cheat sheet to take with us into the exam room, we would still write them down. So at least we have some practice and by doing so, we learn a few of the words in doing so. Whereas these days, our students simply is a click, copy and paste and they learn nothing. So even during cheating, we learned a little and while well, they don't do that anymore. So Jason, I don't think you ever did a cheat sheet, did you? No, no, I didn't either. Uh, it was just when my colleague, when my uh, friends, uh, students used to do that, I used to watch. <laughs> anyway, so how do we uh, measure their learning or rather their achievement? Uh, we can go to the team and if we go to assignments, uh, I'm sharing my screen at the moment. So this is the one I'm going to display today to show how we do that. I will go to assignments. Now we have several options here. Oh, sorry, I'm in mean the wrong one. Uh, general, yeah, assignments. So I can look at all the assignments that my students have done. Now I use quite, uh, these as revision. Uh, at the end of each section, I give them a revision. Then before the test itself, I would give them tutorials. And then finally, I would give them the assessment. Now the assessment again is formal, uh, it, even though it is uh, formative, but yet I treat it as if it was formal. Now I can see that some of my students have viewed the assessment during the class period, but they have not handed in. 
And if I go to grades, I can see who has handed in their assignment. Uh, so this is the test that they did uh, last Tuesday. I can see that um, practically everyone has got 25 marks, so they all have 100%, except for three students who viewed the assignment but did not attempt it. They didn't. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a fail. So what I will do is I'll ask them why they haven't done it. Was it any uh, particular reason? For example, I know that one of my students in here, I will not tell which, but one of them uh, has had COVID-19 and he's just recovering. So I need to make sure that he gets the same chance as everybody else. There is one more thing I would like to show, and that's called Insight. It's a new app and you can download it by simply going to the ellipsis on the side and uh, just type in insight and download this app and it will be just added to your team straight away you do not need any admin per uh, permission or anything like that now the insight uh, i'm just going to close this first the insight is a very good tool to show me the engagement rather than the uh, success rate but if I look at, for example, my past 30 days for, for this class, I can see uh, what is the average grade. So average grade has been 100%. That's fantastic. Uh, half of them have given the assignments on time, etc. And I can look at their engagement as well. Uh, how they have been engaging with my classes. Because every week we have to provide information to our managers regarding the engagement of our students, who's been engaged and who hasn't been. So this provides me with a fantastic tool. I can look at all students or I can look at uh, individual students, for example, what has been done, etc. So that's something that you can look at. So let's go back to our assignment again. How do we create assignment? So we have the option to create a draft for example, this one here is the fourth assignment, but it will be submitted or given to students in two weeks time. Nevertheless, I just wanted to create it and have it ready. So I've done it and I've put it into the draft section. This is the assessment that they did last week and I've already marked them, all the ones that have been handed and uh, they, I'm happy for the rest to go ahead. Now I want to create a new assignment. Now I can either go to my existing assess assignments or assessments that I've already created in different teams and use them or just edit them, or I can just create a whole new one. So I will cancel that and I will go to assignment from uh, a new template. Uh, quiz, the quiz in Moodle is far superior. The quiz in Teams is very limited. Basically, uh, it's just a revision rather than any kind of uh, assessment. I would recommend quiz just as a revision way. Uh, you only have access to multiple choice questions and some basic functionalities. So I'm not going to go through quizzes for today, but I will look at assignments. So we get a new assignment. The title, uh, we can call it whatever we want. Uh, instruction, please download, etc and then uh, we can add a resource so the assignment i've already prepared uh, or the assessment sorry i've already prepared i will add the resor resource that will take me to the ones i've already done and i would say i would upload from this device and this one is a template for creating gantt charts for uh, project management and i would download that now points we can say that they have to gain 100 percent answer everything so there is no point in putting points but let's say we want them to pass with 60 uh, percent uh, or the there are 20 uh, marks overall for all the questions so i would put in 20. Uh, this is a simplified version so then i can look at the answers and uh, mark each one uh, accordingly and then give the final total and if they've done uh, the 60% overall, then they will pass. Uh, and that is a simple version. I'll come back to the rubric in a minute. Assign to uh, the team that I want, or I can just change it to another team if I wish, but I'm going to stay with this one. All students, now at the moment, uh, this class uh, is being taught by two different lecturers. 
So I need to make sure that my students are the ones that are getting it, even though I know that the other lecturer will have to do that. But if I go back to another one where I've got multiple cohorts and there are different levels, then I can make sure that only certain students will get that test. The rest will get their test when it is due for their class. A due date, uh, by default, it goes to today and due time, it goes by uh, this evening at 12 midnight. But I can edit that. So if I want to uh, schedule it in the future, I will click this box, this box and then change the post date. So it will not, post, it will not be posted onto the main channel un, un, until the assignment itself is due. Now I use the term assignment and assessment interchangeably, so please accept that. And I can also uh, adjust the post time. But if it is going to be today, so I will leave it as post today and uh, post time will be during my class. So my class say starts at uh, uh, two o'clock this afternoon and it will be due after one hour. So it will be due at uh, 1300 or 1330. Uh, oh, sorry, Wednesday, 1400. Sorry, it's, self, uh, it's foolproof. So uh, it will be 15.30. And uh, I also have a close date. Uh, at the moment, I've got it as close date. So it will be the same time. After that time, no one uh, can submit anymore. No submissions will be accepted. But if I was feeling generous or if I had students who need required additional time, let's say extended learning support students, they require additional 20%. So I can give additional time for them as well. So I can say, right, instead of 15.30, the course time will be 1600. So after four o'clock, nobody can uh, submit anymore. So I'm done with that and it is uh, now submitted and I can schedule it and it will be posted onto the main channel. Now for Rupi, if we want to uh, break the question, the assessment down into sections as per question and give them a mark for that, then if I may uh, show you another one where I've already prepared that. Uh, if I go to here, I will try and find it. So assignments. Right, before I go any further, I would like to go back to here. Uh, and show you grades as well. So if I go to general for this one. Now the assignments, we've looked at that. Uh, my students have already done assignments and uh, I know that six have been reviewed, but it's not telling me how well they've done. So if I go to grades, I can see that- uh, Sorry, Nader, I just, just want to say we've got a couple of minutes left on the recording. Okay. <laughs> and, but we okay. will have time for questions later. Okay. So now I can see who is viewed, who is given the, who is, what marks they've gained, etc. So I have confidence in uh, my marking and I know who's done that. I can also expect the, export the results into Excel and it will open up an Excel sheet with everybody's name and all the marks they've gained. Uh, so if I go to rubric again, just so I can quickly show you how a rubric can be made and assignments, uh, just be a couple of minutes and after that. So test assignment one, uh, if I go to edit assignment, I can look at the rubric that I've created. Now here, I've broken it down into two questions and I will uh, look at that and each question has got uh, answers. So uh, I'm going to edit assignment. So again, f uh, quickly, uh, each, sorry, sorry guys. So I, I will explain. Uh, I'm just trying to hurry it up. The questions are broken down into uh, sections. At the moment, by default, it gives us four sections, but I can add more. Uh, there will be a plus button in here. Uh, and I can give them four marks, three marks, two marks, or one mark, or zero, two, four, six, eight, etc. Uh, I can also give different weights to each question. So if question one had eight marks and question two had four marks, I can make this one 63% uh, uh, 
uh, and this one uh, 20 27 percent so i can give them rates and uh, make sure that uh, they, they get the right uh, marking okay uh, i couldn't go into rubrics uh, quite well but uh, i have already explained basic the basic principles of setting an assessment online and thank you very much for listening uh, i'm happy to answer any questions you have now um, yes, yeah, so sorry. So this this is for those watching. This is the end of the, the recorded part of the session. Um, uh, next time you should come and join us in the room where we will be continuing uh, and Nader will complete the presentation and we'll have a bit of discussion about what we've just uh, seen. But um, until then, uh, perhaps you'll join us for the next one and I hope to see you there. Thank you.